Venezuela, Caracas. Three days the elections are coming up, and more than likely, very shortly thereafter, regime change operations will commence. There are forces staging in Panama, forces in Colombia, a few in Brazil, and we are also standing up some different assets in the Fourth Fleet. While we could sit here and debate about the causes of what's happened in Caracas, from now till doomsday, and I could put out evidence that it's not what they're telling you, as a former serviceman, let me say this clearly. Once the decision is made to go, the discussion about the righteousness of the operation stops. Politics stops at the water's edge. When they go wheels up, when these guys are deployed and the boots hit the ground, there's going to be no more talk from me about Washington this or Washington that, even though I might feel it, politics stops at the water's edge when our soldiers, sailors, airmen, marine, the guardsmen are in harm's way and are put in harm's way. We stand united. Now, we're going to come back to this, but I want to cover something very, very important. It's been the main direction of the channel. It has to do with the former commander of the USS Fitzgerald. He's calling out the Navy for their ridiculous attempt to slime him and his shipmates in the media. This channel has spent the last year revealing the lies, the holes, the misstatements, the reversals from the US Navy, highlighting the completely different way they treated this accident with death than they have treated almost every single other accident involving servicemen that have died. And you can go back and you can look through the history. In fact, shortly after this, we had a uh, large transport aircraft, I want to say C-130, take off from Savannah, Georgia, heading for Arizona, crash in Mississippi, killed 16. You didn't see anything remotely like the shit show you saw after the Fitzgerald. They came out, they made a statement, they said it's under investigation, any relevant, unclassified information we can give to you, by all means we will. And that's it. And had they done that with the Fitzgerald, this channel probably wouldn't even be here today. I mean, we might still be talking about the issue in Venezuela. Maybe that's saying a little bit too much. But the point being, he has, and I'm just going to read an excerpt from the statement from his attorney down here in this article on USNI that I think sums it up quite well. Commander Benson's approach to accountability stands in stark contrast to the Navy's method of litigating this case through the media and other out-of-court options and declarations from senior Navy leaders. As Commander Benson recuperates from his own debilitating injuries and proceeds through the institutional, administrative, and disciplinary procedures triggered by the collision, senior Navy leaders have repeatedly used public forums to assign guilt, foreclose legitimate defenses, and cast unwarranted aspersions. Now, that sums it up well. The entire statement is here on USNI, and you can read it, and as well as the Navy response. Excuse me. But, as promised, when you look at the situation here in Caracas, attempting to overthrow the government, it becomes apparent to anyone who's ever been in the military what the problem here is. You see, we have this spine of mountains, and then we have these islands here. And if you're going to try to do some kind of a direct assault from sea, it's going to be fraught with all sorts of problems. 
there's really only one way in through these mountains, and I'm sure they'll be watching them like a hawk. The Venezuelans are not, you know, French Guyana. They're, they've got some assets, and they know how to use them. Cucuta, way up here in the distance, I don't know if you can kind of see where I'm circling, way up here at the top of the screen. I'm sorry, up here. Yeah, there it is, Cucuta right here. That's the border with Colombia. It's a good long way from Cucuta to Caracas. And while I know we have some really fantastic air assets, I'm not sure how well air assets would play in this overthrow, given the vast amount of civilians in the region. And if they're going to turn this city into Damascus or Aleppo or Raqqa with continual bombardment, it's going to be a tough thing. And that this, I think Americans will get a very, uh, up close and personal experience this being right off the coast of Florida and as you can well I know you can't see it really I can see it but um, just the way they have I have this tripod set up I had to make some compromises but just off the top of the screen here you can see Puerto Rico San Juan um, Cuba off to the left over here you know this is right off Florida this is right in our backyard but I will leave you with a very cool animation of an asset that might come into play here. This is called the M80 Stiletto. And you can see why, and you I should say you will be able to see why, in this animation it will more than likely play a critical role in the invasion of Caracas. And I'll leave with this. Seaborne SOF insertion. Our first operational scenario involves a classic covert SOF insertion. For this mission, Stiletto's loadout can be tailored to include one 11-meter rigid hull inflatable boat, or RIB, to support a 12-man SEAL team and four Silver Fox unmanned aerial vehicles. Before Stiletto, surface SEAL team insertions were made by closing with a large amphibious mothership to within 35 miles or so of the target, and then having the team pound into the beach in the 11-meter RIB. Using Stiletto, the large high-value mothership can remain hundreds of miles offshore, while Stiletto securely and covertly transports the SEAL team and their 11-meter rib at high speed without subjecting the team to the pounding of a long transit in the rib. While en route, Stiletto can launch UAVs to fly ahead and scout a target area. As they proceed in towards their objective, the SOF team can use port and starboard mission planning areas aboard Stiletto to review maps and view real-time UAV intelligence. Under cover of darkness, Stiletto can deliver the team to within a few miles of the target, be it a coastal missile battery, WMD storage facility, or hostage rescue site. As a mission progresses, Stiletto can serve as a C2 center, coordinating team communications and intelligence from the UAVs and other sensors. Once the mission is complete, Stiletto can retrieve the team and the rib. A helicopter can extract rescued hostages as Stiletto returns to its amphibious mothership over the horizon. Our next operational scenario examines a complex coastal and riverine command and control mission. For this mission, Stiletto's loadout can be tailored to include two 3-meter unmanned surface vehicles stored in the central part of the cargo bay in lieu of the 11-meter rib, and four unmanned aerial vehicles for broad area surveillance. For the extended mission, Stiletto is also reconfigured with extra planning space, crew sleeping quarters, and mess areas. With its unmanned aerial vehicles, and from a distance offshore, Stiletto can monitor the entire operational area. As a C-2 command center for half a dozen 11-meter patrol boats, Stiletto can maintain broad area surveillance of the harbors, oil refineries, offshore oil rigs, and commercial waterways to be protected. When close-in surface coverage is required, the unmanned surface vehicles can be launched from Stiletto. While patrolling upriver, the USV detects a concealed ambush that had been overlooked by the broad area coverage of the UAV. The patrol boats deploy to neutralize the ambush and clear the river.
maritime interdiction operations. Among its many potential interagency missions, Stiletto is well adapted to supporting U.S. Coast Guard open ocean maritime interdiction operations, locating and inspecting merchant ships of interest en route to U.S. ports. For this mission, Stiletto's loadout would include a bow-mounted 20mm gun and a 12-man U.S. Coast Guard detachment. The electronic keel would be loaded with databases of suspect personnel and ships of interest from the National Maritime Intelligence Center, or NMIC, in Suitland, Maryland, and the latest Lloyd's data on ship schedules and cargoes. The cargo bay would hold an 11-meter rib for boarding parties and four UAVs. Stiletto would initially be guided to ships of interest by Coast Guard location estimates based on filed departure and arrival reports. Stiletto's UAVs could then be used to identify specific ships using photos and other data from the NMIC databases. UHF SATCOM links enable real-time updates from the Coast Guard and the NMIC. Coast Guard Region 4, this is patrol vessel Stiletto. We have located contact of interest number Alpha Bravo and are closing for inspection. The vessel's crew musters on the bow, watched over by the UAV and stiletto. The boarding party also checks cargo containers for radiation and broken seals. On the bridge, the passenger and cargo manifests are inspected. With its significant onboard processing power, stiletto can immediately compare manifest data to NMIC and Coast Guard databases. Once the ship has been inspected, Stiletto reports back to the Coast Guard Regional Control Center and the NMIC. If radiation, contraband, or other anomalies are detected, special forces and a Coast Guard cutter will be dispatched to escort the vessel into port. Stiletto can then recover the boarding party and proceed on to the next target of interest. These scenarios show just a few of Stiletto's potential uses. Stiletto should not yet be seen as an operational prototype, but rather as a platform for further experimentation and development. Areas yet to be explored include armor and armament, alternative propulsion systems, radar signature reduction, and systems such as Link-16 that enhance networking and coordination with other ships and aircraft. Size is also a basic question. Should Stiletto be smaller and more covert, or larger for greater cargo capacity? The design can be scaled up or down depending on the operational mission. The current version of Stiletto, now entering an operational experimentation and testing phase with Naval Expeditionary and Special Operations Forces, is just a starting point for new ideas. As Stiletto becomes operational, it will improve our understanding of how best to seize the initiative and achieve victory in coastal and riverine environments. Like, share, subscribe. Saw a lot of stuff there that'll make you think, right? Take care, guys.